Welcome back. In this mini lesson we will learn about the so-called inverse transform method. The inverse transform method is one of the sampling procedures that are used for transforming numbers from random number generators into other random numbers that have a specific probability density function. The random number generator gives the random numbers that have uniform distribution. We don't always need uniform distribution. Sometimes we do, but sometimes not. For instance, when we sample the distance between neutron collisions, well, we know that that is given by the exponential probability distribution function. So we need to transform the random numbers that have a uniform probability distribution into random numbers that have some another form of the probability density function. There are several ways this can be achieved and the inverse transform method is one of them. So let me just summarize the problem. The problem is to generate samples, values of a random variable x that has a given probability density function or a cumulative distribution function. So usually these numbers cannot be sampled directly because of the specific uh, probability density function. Instead we choose to sample random numbers uniformly within the interval 0, 1 by the random number generators and then we transform these random numbers into other random numbers that have the required probability density function. So for this we are going to use the uh, inverse transform method. Let me explain the idea of the inverse transform method by an example. Let's try to use the method to sample the reaction type. So when neutron collides with a nucleus it can either scatter or it can be captured or it can uh, produce fission reaction. So let's index the reaction types and let's assign probabilities to them. So let's say that reaction number one is a uh, scattering and it occurs with the probability 50%. Uh, let's say that reaction number two is capture and it uh, occurs with the probability 10% and reaction number three is fission and it is probability 40%. So in one of the previous mini lessons we have learned how, how to uh, create the cumulative distribution function. So since we know the probability for different uh, reaction types we can actually uh, draw the cumulative distribution function. So we have f, we have the let's say the index i denotes the reaction type. So reaction number one is scattering and we have probability 50%. So uh, the value of the cumulative distribution function is uh, 0.5. So we have 0.5 here. Reaction number two is capture and it has probability 10%. So the cumulative distribution function would have value 0.6. 60% because it combines the probability of all the previous uh, reaction types together with the actual one. So that is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1. And finally we have the fission reaction number 3 which is probability 40%. And the value of the cumulative distribution function must be 1. So 1 is here. And here we have this. So the cumulative distribution function looks like 
this it is a stair like form let me denote the zero value here now the idea of the inverse transform method is fairly simple it generates the random numbers from 0 to 1 by LCG for instance or any other random number generator and it assigns this value to the to the vertical axis here so for instance uh, we can uh, randomly sample number here that would be something like 0 0.8 and then it finds the corresponding value on the horizontal axis so in this case that would be number three which would be fission so let's try to simulate several numbers so for instance the next one could be here the corresponding reaction type would be one scattering the next one could fall here that would be three number three that is fission again the next one could fall here for instance that would be again number one scattering then it could be generated for instance here so that would be scattering again another random number could be 0.55 so that would fall here the corresponding reaction type 2 denotes capture so from this example you can see if you sample randomly numbers from 0 to 1 then 10 percent of the numbers will fall in the interval 0.5 to 0.6 so that means that uh, with the probability 10 percent this is the difference in this interval the reaction type would be number two which is uh, the capture which is really originally assigned to have the probability 10 percent and similarly 40 percent of random numbers will fall within the interval 0.6 and 1 so therefore with the probability 40 percent reaction type number three will be chosen the fission you can see originally we really assigned this reaction to be selected with the probability 40 percent and again if you sample randomly numbers within the interval uh, 0 and 1 uniformly then half of them will fall in the interval 0 and 0.5 50 percent of numbers will be generated in this interval and those will be numbers that will be transformed into reaction type number one the scattering which originally we wanted to be selected with the probability 50 percent so uh, this is basically the idea of the inverse transform method so in order to use this method we need to have the cumulative distribution function in such a form that will allow us easily to find the corresponding values uh, if we sample randomly the uh, value of the cumulative distribution function we need to find the corresponding x value for it so uh, let me just write it down uh, let's say that uh, we generate our random number u here somewhere on the uh, vertical axis and then we need to basically to solve this equation we need to find the x value so in this case that would be the index the reaction type index i so to solve this simple equation i only need to invert the f function the the cumulative distribution function so x equals the inverse function evaluated at our random number u the method can work for any random variable not just discrete as was the variable in our example it can also work for continuous random variables 
The only requirement is that the cumulative distribution function can be inverted. It's not always possible to find the inverse value for the cumulative distribution function, but when it is possible and when this uh, function is simple to evaluate, then, then we can use the inverse transfer method easily to sample the random var values for the random variable. And this is just a summary of the method. You take the cumulative distribution function of the random variable that you want to sample, you invert this function, and then you start to generate random numbers randomly from the interval 0 to 1, and ev evaluate the inverted cumulative uh, distribution function for these random values. By this you will transform them into uh, random values that will match the correct probability density function of your random variable. So the disadvantage of this method is that not always it is possible to invert the cumulative distribution function and sometimes even when the uh, inverted function exists it may not actually be in, in a form that is suitable for efficient calculation. Nevertheless, the inverse transfer method is incredibly useful for us and we will use it always when we have the random variable with a cumulative distribution function that is easy to invert. And that is all for now and I will see you in the next mini lesson.